Here we find three functions on two variables and we're asked to state the domain and the range. And so we're just gonna go through all three examples, write down the domain range and just think our way through the problems. Right now we're just thinking about these as taking in an X and a Y and giving out a Z. We can think about these graphically. We can do the thing where we say, well, the domain is some set of real numbers in a plane and then we could graph the outputs above the respective point graphing a Z, just like we thought of in the last video with the top half of a sphere. What I wanna do this time though is not try to think visually right now. I wanna think about just the functions and what I already know about functions that look like these to find the domain and range. And so for this first one, f of x comma y equals the square root of x minus y squared, I think to myself, well, if I'm going to be able to evaluate that square root, I need the thing that's under the even root to be bigger than or equal to zero. If I add y squared to both sides, that would tell me that x must be bigger than or equal to y squared. Well, I'm gonna graph that inequality. X and Y axes here. And I think about X equal Y squared. And I know what that would be. That would be a sideways facing parabola. These would be all the points where X equal Y squared. And now I need to think about the points where X is bigger than y squared and shade those two. And I can use an old trick where I pick a sample point like one comma one half and plug it in and see if it satisfies the inequality. All right, so x is one and y is one half and that works. So all of my points I need to shade are in this region that goes on forever and ever and that would be my domain. Now, when someone asks me for a domain, I feel like I need to tell them what it is in symbols. So I'm going to say that these are all the x comma y's such that x is bigger than or equal to y squared. And I could actually write this down as my rule, but I feel better writing it down this way because whoever comes across and reads this, I hope they're going to think about this parabola. All right, now I need to think about the range, the values we can get out for z. Well, again, just thinking about square root functions. If this was just the square root of some number, which I argue it is, right? Because if I take a number and subtract a number squared, well, I'm just taking the square root of a number. The smallest thing I could ever get out is zero. And in fact, if I plug in the origin, the square root of zero minus zero squared is zero. And then the square root function itself just keeps going and getting bigger. And so I'm thinking maybe that this is the range from zero to infinity, just like the square root function. And all I have to do is convince you that it does get bigger on some of the points in this domain. So just think about the x-axis for a moment. And if we just think about the x-axis, well, that would be where y is equal to zero. <clears throat> and this equation would just become the square root of x. And then I would have a range that goes off to infinity. Well, since I've included the whole range possible for the square root function, that has to be the range of this function on two variables. The range is from zero to infinity g of x comma y is one over x times y, x times y being on the bottom of that fraction. And I know I'm not allowed to divide by zero, so the product x times y can't be zero. All right, well that means neither x can be zero nor y can be zero, right? Those are both bad things, right? It'd be dividing by zero. So when I go to think about this domain, well, if x can't be zero, that means I can't plug in any of the points on the y-axis, so the y-axis is out. I can't plug in any of the spots where y is equal to zero, so the x-axis is out, but literally every other point would be fine. So the domain here is literally all of the points in any of the quadrants, but not the quadrantal points. So my domain all the real numbers, excuse me, all the ordered pairs in the plane, I mean that mistake students make a lot where they wanna say things like all real numbers for these domains and their sets of points in the plane. So all the points in the plane so that X times Y is not zero. All right, now we're tasked with thinking about the range. And again, I'm thinking about one over a number, right? The product X times Y is just 
a number, and it has me thinking about that function I know so well in the plane, y equals one over x. And if I was to just think about its graph, I know its range is all of the real numbers except for zero. Well, if I let y equal one, this literally becomes one over x, and I would get out all of the real numbers except for zero. And again, since that's the biggest possible range I could think about for one over a number, it has to be my range. Erase my thoughts over here so I can fit in that whole range. Another way to think about that is I can make the bottom be any number I want it to be. That number can be so big I get arbitrarily close to zero, but since the top is never zero, the whole fraction can't be zero. I can also make that product of x and y be as small as I want it to be, which means I can make this fraction go towards positive infinity. And by picking either x or y to be negative while the other one's positive, I can make it rush towards minus infinity. Okay, so now my favorite example of the ones here I have cosine of pi xy, and if I really think about it, x times y is a number. Pi times the number is a number. This is just cosine of a number. And you can take the cosine of literally any number. So any number for x, any number for y, and the pi as a constant will work. And so the domain here is all ordered pairs x, y, where x and y are simply real numbers. It's the whole real plane. Another way of writing down that domain instead of in set builder notation where I say x comma y such that x and y are real numbers, this little symbol here, by the way, looks like a little weird shaped e is a set inclusion symbol. We read that as n, but what I'd usually write here is that this is the whole real plane. This is all of R2. All right, the range I know just simply from knowing the range of cosine. The biggest cosine can ever be is one, the smallest cosine can ever be is minus one. And because I can make the product x, y be any number I want it to be, I can make the product of x, y, and pi be anything I want it to be, which means we get out the whole range for cosine.